Hello there and welcome to another video by the MXQ project. So this video is all about Alex Alec. This is going to be a generic video not just based around the MXQ but a wide range of TV boxes. So this gives you the opportunity to give it a go because usually our videos are based around the S805, S905 processor. So Alex Alec is a bit like LibreLec, OpenLec. So it's an operating system built purely to run coding. But the interesting part about Alex Leck is that it also incorporates a few things with Kodi as well as a system called Emulation Station which is a front end for RetroArch. So this gives you the opportunity to easily play your favourite retro games on your device. Now this system can only be dual booted so there's no risk of it damaging your hardware. So let's move on and let's show you the first part of how to dual boot your box with Alex Leck. So let's go and grab the file so we can actually dual boot it. So all we need to do is we need to go to alexelec.in.ua. Now this is a Russian website. Don't worry too much about that. You can use Google Chrome if you want to to translate it or some other translation tool. But it's pretty straightforward to navigate around it. So let's go to this website. And at the top you'll see alexelec slash arm slash 2.2.3 and it says Amalogic S805 S812 905 905X so this is the first link we need to click on to go to where we need to go now obviously it's in Russian so you're not going to be able to understand this but anyway this link here just here is what we need to click on if you want to translate it and that says storage Google Drive storage whatever and click on that and it will load up GitHub now this is where all our image files are stored and as you can see, there's a ton of different devices that Alex Lick supports. So we've got all the usual S8 of 5 MXQ versions. Then we've got some random ones I've never heard of the Vanda.arm ever before. We've also got S812. Now that's an interesting one because this will bring Krypton to the S812. Moving on, we've got we've got different versions. We've got MX3G.arm, QIntex, whatever that is, T95N, X96. And all the different S905 devices, you need to change something called a DTP file. Now, this is a, quite an important part of this video because DTP files is going to de determine whether your S905 box works or not. So, if we click that open in another another tab, we've got our DTP for your files here. Now, if you've ever watched any of our videos, we've actually covered this before in the S905 or LibreLec, and you need to drag and drop these DTP files to into your SD card to get them to work. This is something I'll cover further on down the video, but for now, let's just go back to this part. So these are all our downloads here. Now we've got image.gz files and we've got .tar files. Ignore the tar files because they're for updating and this is not what got, this is not gonna be covered in this video. So we've got the s 5 MXQ v 20arm that's for obviously the MXQ box, so if you've got an S8 of 5 MXQ, that'll be for you. We've also got different versions of the MXQ as well, so some versions where the Wi-Fi will work, Wi-Fi won't work, and so on. So it will be a case of trying them all, really. And then down further down, we've got M8S, we've got different versions of the M8S Plus, um, T95, and so on. So I'm going to download this one here. Because this is the box I'm going to try and boot it from, which is an MXQ S8 of 5. So let's move on and let's show you how to dual boot it using a system called Win32 Disk Imager. Now you can get this from anywhere, but if you want to grab this from us, just go to the MXQ project, forward slash files, just as shown. And this will bring you to index files, and at the bottom you'll see Win32 Disk. Just install that. It's just a really simple executable program. Just install that and we can move on to the next part. You can get this from anywhere, don't worry about getting it from us. You can Google it and just type in Win32 Disk Imager and it'll, someone will come up with something with a link somewhere to actually install it. So make sure you've got your image file for whichever device you want to try it on. And then make sure you've installed Win32 Disk Imager. And then let's load up Win32 Disk Imager. And you'll be presented with this little screen. 
So that right here, as you can see, this is my file. So you've got to unzip the file, as you notice on here. It says image.gz. So that's a zip file. So you need to unzip it using something, I don't know, 7-zip, WinZip, whatever. I'll leave a link in the description to an unzip tool. Just make sure that once you've unzipped it, it says, which I'll show you, it says, it's an image file. So it's not an image.gz file, it is an image file. So once you've done that, select your device. So on on this, you need to insert an SD card, so something like this. You, know, you need an SD card, of course. Just insert into your computer. And then, Win32 disk image is probably going to be a pain and won't recognize it straight away. There we go, you can see it now. So we've got device H just there. So that's the SD card I've just inserted. And then we're going to find the image file. Let's have a look. There we go. And that's our select. So that's my image file just there. Click open. And then all we need to do is click right. And then click yes. That's it nearly done. So now we're going to move over to the TV where I'm going to show you the first initial boot of Alex Rec. So once you've burnt the image onto an SD card, all you need to do is find the SD card tray on your box. On the MXQ it's on the stun side there, pop your SD card in, pop your HDMI cable in and get the power cable ready. Don't insert it just yet. Now, on your box, somewhere, is going to be an AV reset button. On the MXQ, it's just in the AV port. Same for the MXQ Pro. It's just in the AV port. On your box, it might be somewhere different. I'm not entirely sure. I think on the M8 test, it's in the same similar port, the AV port. T95, I don't know. You would have to have a look around. But anyway, when you're looking for it, Pop a thin object inside one of the ports and just click, feel for a click. So this is your reset button. So you'll probably be able to hear that on camera. Hold that button in. Obviously make sure your HDMI cable's in and your TV selected to the right channel. And then apply power. Now to go over that again. Insert your SD card into your MXQ or your MXQ Pro or your M8S or whatever box you've got. Make sure your HDMI cable's in and select it to the right channel. Grab yourself something thin and sharp. Find your AV button or reset button wherever it is on your hardware. And keep it held in while you apply the power. Now what should happen on screen, it should boot up and this is the splash screen that you should see. Now if this fails to boot and you end up at the Android recovery, don't worry too much because the chances are you're in an S905 box or an S905X device and there's something we can do which involves changing something called a DTB file. Now the next part is going to cover that so if you've managed to boot your box successfully then you can skip that bit but if not have a look at this and we'll change a few DTB files around and trying to get your Alex would like to boot on your device. So if you've tried to boot it on your TV and it hasn't worked, then you need to try and change something called a DTB file as mentioned previously in the video. So what we need to do is insert your SD card into your computer. Go into the SD card and you'll see all these files. Now ignore all of them apart from this one here which says dtb.image. So what you need to do is delete this one, just delete it, just make sure that's the only file you delete and then go back to Alexrex GitHub and on here, go a little bit further down you'll see this little link just here, if I can highlight that, just there, four other devices on Amalogic S905 905X, replace DDB of image. So this is only for devices running the S905 or the S905X. So click on that link there, and you'll see all these files here. And there's a little bit more information if you go a little bit further down. 
So it says here P200 to P201 for Amalogic S905 and P212 for Amalogic S905X. So basically you need to try all these files depending on your S905 device. So download one of the files, click onto one of them, click download, click OK. And all you need to do is grab the file from wherever it's been saved on your computer and put it into somewhere in a safe place. Know that. Right, this is our DDB file we've just downloaded just here. And all we need to do is rename it to dtb.image, just like that, and then click yes. And there we have it. Now, load it back up your SD card, and simply drag and drop that into there. And then proceed and try it again and try and boot it up. Now, if that fails again, then you need to try another DDB file and just keep trying until it eventually boots up. So yeah, that is it. That is how to dual boot Alex Lek on your hardware. There was a lot of information to take in there, especially if you're running an S905 device. Those DTP files can be a bit of a pest sometimes. So, emulation station is a major part of this system and I obviously I've not covered it properly in this video. I think this video has gone on long enough now, so I'll probably cover that in another video. But if you really want to get on with this, then all you need to know is you need to Samba in and transfer your game ROM files into the correct folders using Samba. Now if you don't know what Samba is, that's fine. You can check out our other videos on the Samba process. It's very easy. We've also got a good part about it on the website as well. Come over to the Facebook group. We can also help you over there. You can also check out our website, themxqproject.com, or even the forum. Just put a slash on the end, type forum, and you'll be taken there where you can subscribe. And sign up. So if you like this video give me a thumbs up, if you disliked it give me a dislike and don't forget to hit subscribe and we shall see you in the next video.